It is the 7th of February 2021 and it's coming up to 7 p.m. in the evening and this is a video about royal children and birth certificates and I'm a little bit excited about it. The story that broke this week about Meghan Markle changing her birth certificate of Archie is a great example of showing you how the palace work in partnership with the media to play good cop, bad cop, and how they can hide a secret by doing so, by creating a massive amount of distraction. Did Meghan Markle change her name on baby Archie's birth certificate? Not so fast. A spokesperson for the Duchess denied recent speculation that Meghan was behind her updated moniker on the official document, which omitted her first and middle names from the original version in favor of just her Royal Highness the Duchess of Sussex, reportedly a month after Archie's May 2019 arrival. Over the weekend, tabloid gossip surfaced that Meghan had asked for the modification as a subtle dig to sister-in-law Kate Middleton, whose given name is said to be listed on her children's birth certificates. However, Meghan's rep set the record straight in a statement to multiple outlets on Sunday, explaining that the 39-year-old had nothing to do with the switch, saying, quote, the change of name on public documents in 2019 was dictated by the palace as confirmed by documents from senior palace officials. This was not requested by Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, nor by the Duke of Sussex. The reason why this is interesting is because it follows in the footsteps of Princess Diana, who did not have her name on William and Harry's birth certificate. According to the news reports, they had, it had the name Princess of Wales. Now, I've been doing videos about how I felt that there was two Dianas, if you will, and the one that we saw at Harry's christening was a model and she did not give birth to the child. And it's interesting to note that when they got divorced, Charles and Diana, she would have lost not only her HRH status, but technically speaking, there would be no legal record of who the mother of William and Harry was because the mother was listed as Princess of Wales. Now that Diana divorced Charles, she was the ex-Princess of Wales. Um, it all starts to look a little bit mysterious and it's like, oh, who, who was the real Diana? Was her title just used to cover up for the fact that there was two or three women involved in the birthing of Harry? And William, I mean, the way that Diana was treated after she got divorced was is like, okay, you know, you're the nanny, now you're out of the picture. It's like when Tiggy came along, she was going to be replaced. And she had to fight to still be the mother of her own children, which is really humiliating and embarrassing and mortifying experience when, when one family tries to push out another parent I mean, usually in historic terms, a lot of women have done that to men. But here we've seen Diana getting ousted from the royal establishment, from the firm, in the last years of her life. Meghan's real name is Rachel, and the story of Rachel in the Bible is of a woman who was infertile. And she had to employ the services of a servant to have her children for her. So I'm just going to quote you something from Wikipedia. Rachel, like Sarah and Rebecca, remained unable to conceive. According to the biblical scholar Tikva Fry Markensky, the infertility of the matriarchs has two effects. It heightens the drama of the birth of the eventual son, and it emphasizes that pregnancy is an act of God. But I cannot forget, and nor can those of us here today who knew her much more personally as sister, 
wife, mother or daughter-in-law, the Diana who made such an impact on our lives. Of course, there were difficult times, but memories mellow with the passing of the years. I remember especially the happiness she gave to my two grandsons. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Charles, William, Harry, and all my family, and of all the Spencer family with us today, I have much pleasure in declaring the Diana Princess of Wales Memorial Fountain open. what I'm seeing in the photographs of Diana is true, then there must have been on some high level a collusion between the palace and the media. There must have been an agreement to portray a very, very specific narrative. Even at Balmoral, the royal family is under constant surveillance by the media. The prince resents the intrusion, longing for more privacy than the zoom lenses of a tabloid media will allow. I'm, I'm not, I'm not very good at being a performing monkey, really. And uh, I, I think that um, I am quite a sort of private person. I, I'm not prepared to, to just perform um, whenever they want me to perform on that sort of score. And uh, no, I, I, it would be all right if they actually went away. But as I was saying, they don't. I always think there's a camera now, always, or something like a camera, and worse. I mean, you it is extraordinary how now you feel, I do anyway, that wherever you are, there's somebody hiding behind something somewhere. And with these immense cameras now, with these huge uh, lenses and magnification, you can sit you know, a mile away, quite happily, and photograph through windows and everything else. And they do. I seen you. <laughs> In order to hide a lot of truth and keep a lot of secrets, there's an awful lot of tension behind the scenes because the information has to be controlled. And I think in the case of Jacinta Saldana, the nurse who tragically committed suicide after two journalists played a prank on her. I think this uh, shows what can happen behind the scenes when there's the partnership between the media and the palace and all this toxicity and secrecy and how it can affect people and how the whole thing is a very bad combination. You know what? They were the worst accents ever. And it was meant as a light-hearted Aussie prank. Even after their station issued an apology, the two DJs who duped the hospital were making light of it. We were sure a hundred people at least yeah. before us would have tried the same thing. Now they've been suspended from their jobs and one of the nurses they humiliated and fooled is dead. It is with deep sadness that I can confirm the tragic death of a member of our nursing staff, Jacintha Saldana. We can confirm that Jacintha was recently the victim of a hoax call to the hospital. Hospital officials say Saldana was the nurse who transferred the prank call to the Royal Ward. Personal details about the condition of Catherine, the Duchess of Cambridge, who is being treated for severe morning sickness, were disclosed. So there's something about this story that just does not add up. But what we do have is that le information got leaked about a royal pregnancy and a nurse is now dead. Oh, hello there. Could I please speak to Kate, please, my granddaughter? Their station boss says no laws were broken. We're very confident that we haven't done anything illegal. When is a good time to come and visit her? Because I'm the Queen. Well, the DJs are expected to reach out to the nurse's family, and a spokeswoman for the radio station tells us that we will probably be hearing them make a public statement, likely sometime this week. Dan and Diana? So interesting to hear the public reaction there as opposed to in the rest of the world. Private Cecilia, mix. thank you. The story of the prank call was all over the news. It started, started rolling on the 5th of December. The tragic death of Jacintha 
happened on the 7th of December. And in the next clip, some journalists caught up with Charles and... Your Royal Highness, what's your reaction to the news about the uh, Duke and Duchess of Cambridge? How do you know I'm not a radio station? <laughs> yeah, I'm thrilled, marvellous. Very nice thought of, father, of grandfatherhood in my, my old age, if I may say so. So that's splendid. And I'm very glad my daughter was getting better. Thank goodness. Thank you very much. The information we now know it was the nurse who put the, the receptionist, she's a nurse as well, who put the call through. The hospital say that she had worked at the hospital for four years, was very well liked. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge describe themselves as very saddened, deeply saddened, to learn of the death of Jacintha Saldana, according to St. James's Palace. And the, the, the the fact, I mean, you know, one's even stumbling just to find the words that the, the prank that took place was clearly so affected this woman that uh, she just, she committed suicide. Richard, do we actually know this? I mean, has anybody been able to make this definitive connection between what happened to her with the prank? I mean, I know it is proximate in time, but might there have been anything else that led to this, or do we know that this is really a cause and effect? No, I mean, you're, 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 if you're asking <clears throat> for the level of certainty, uh, then no, you, until we get a statement that links the two. However, that said, if you're asking the fact that, look, if we look at what we've been told by the hospital, we know the person that was involved, and we know the facts as they've been presented to us. She was found unconscious in rooms near the hospital. <clears throat> she was the uh, receptionist who was involved uh, in, in passing on the call, and the hospital has made no effort to at least distance the two stories. So it is, a, it is, an, it is an acceptance here, certainly, that there is a connection between the two events. And then, of course, what of the DJs and the radio station in Australia? Has there been any comment from them? No, and we wouldn't necessarily expect that. It's the middle of the night in Sydney. I'm guessing it's 12, 14 hour time difference. So you're looking at well and truly early into the hours of the morning, half past four, five o'clock on a Saturday morning. And no doubt that is where the reaction. They've already said they've apologized. Uh, if you listen to what the DJ said after the story blew up initially, they said they never expected that they would be believed with their upper crust plummy accents of the Queen and Prince Charles. Uh, we are most definitely not repeating the tape at the moment of what was broadcast then or what the prank was. That would be in bad taste at the moment. Uh, but if you do listen to it, it does sound somewhat incredulous, but that's the way it is. To answer your, I don't think I gave you a proper and full answer uh, to your previous question. The Metropolitan Police say they are not looking for anybody and there are no suspicious circumstances. So the fact that this woman committed suicide is pretty much beyond doubt, uh, just to sort of give you the reason why. It's not like, you know, she was, she, mm -hmm. God forbid, she killed herself in some other way. If there was that amount of terror behind the scenes, kind of life or death energy, if you talk, like if you're a nurse and you know something, or if you're a doctor and you know something and you tell the public and you see that this nurse has lost her life. I mean, that that is very intimidating. The agency, when we were told to do something by the palace, it was never that dramatic, but we never questioned it. Nobody ever actually said, no, we're not going to do it, or why should we? Or, you know, it, I remember it was just a case of you, you did it or else. Could I suggest to you that the attention Diana got from the paparazzi is part of the price of fame in our society? Nobody, nobody has to live their life with these pressures constantly in mind. Why should anyone have to carry on and conduct their everyday existence worrying about uh, these pestilential parasites? When Prince Charles and Diana's sisters arrived in Paris to take her body back to London, their faces told the story. But it was a week later at her funeral 
that Diana's brother put their feelings into words. It is a point to remember that of all the ironies about Diana, perhaps the greatest was this. A girl given the name of the ancient goddess of hunting was, in the end, the most hunted person of the modern age.